CataractCoach.com. We have a two-step technique for posterior plaque and a dense nuclear sclerotic cataract. So this is a cataract with a combination of both types of changes. You can see centrally there's a very dense central granular posterior subcapsular cataract and plaque formation. That's so dense that it prevented us from doing an optical coherence biometry. We're going to make our main phaco incision here. The black mark is the 180 degree meridian and we're making this incision at about the 165 degree mark. That's where the patient's astigmatism is, that's the steep axis. Now we'll get our capsular axis forceps and we're looking for a nice five and a half millimeter capsular axis. So we'll poke in the center here. And again, we're gonna center this up just beautifully. Here we go with the rexus, that's measuring. Again, the middle mark on the forceps is two and a half millimeters from the tip and the other mark is five. So we'll aim to make this just about five or five and a half. So we continue it here, it's nice and round, curvilinear, bringing this all the way over and we'll complete this. Now this is a patient who is a VIP patient, came a long way away to see me and really was very interested in seeing a video of his surgery. So we're happy to share this, as well as teach our younger doctors this two-step technique. So here's the technique. We're gonna first do a hydro dissection. That separates the capsule from the posterior plaque. There it is. Now we're gonna do hydro delineation. There's the golden ring of delineation. That separates the endonucleus. So the two step is first we're gonna use the phaco probe and the chopper to chop up the endonucleus. That's getting out the dense central part of the cataract. Then we'll use the probe to aspirate away the epinuclear shell, which will contain the posterior plaque opacity. So here, phaco probe going in the eye. Here comes the chopper. We're gonna buzz in with the phaco probe. Put the chopper in, bring them together and apart, and there you go, split into two halves. And of course, now we can just wolf down each half. We can use our chopper here to bring that half in front of the probe. We're using phaco power modulations to totally minimize the amount of energy we put in the eye. And we're just gonna stay central, centrally here and work to emulsify that first half of the cataract. Once we have that first heminucleus out, now we can get to the second heminucleus. Again, buzzing in, using the phaco chopper to help feed the pieces towards the tip. So this was the dense nuclear sclerotic part of the cataract, the central part. It's just about gone, one last little piece remaining. And then we're gonna aspirate out the shell. And the shell is gonna contain the posterior plaque. So here comes the shell, using the chopper just to feed it and help it come out of the capsule bag. And we wanna bring this whole epinuclear shell out just like that. Now I use the same phaco settings. I just modulate it with my foot pedal control. So you don't need to have a separate setting for this. You just need to have good surging control. And just like that, that epinuclear shell and the posterior plaque are now gone. Look centrally there. Now when you look centrally, you see the uh, area where the plaque came off. It's totally bare in the middle. The granular plaque has been completely removed. We'll now switch to the IA probe to clean up all the cortex, and you'll see we'll be left with a pristine capsular bag. So taking our time, do a good job here. Of course, the air bubbles are of no consequence. We'll just aspirate those out. And nice and easy, removing all the cortex, and then we'll polish up the capsular bag as well to make sure there's no residual lens material remaining. So again, this patient has a mild degree of corneal astigmatism, steep at about 165 degrees. And this is why we have the incision at that position. So here's polishing up the posterior capsule and now going under the anterior capsular rim as well and removing as much as possible of the residual lens material. We want this capsular bag pristine. As you know, we take pride in our work and we want this to be as perfect as possible, and this looks amazing. We've also talked in the past how our signature is our capsorexis and the incision. And in this case, both of those are just beautiful. So finishing up here, that looks great. There's still some residual uh, viscoelastic, which we'll, of course we'll remove at the end of the case. And now we're gonna get be prepared to put our lens in. So cleaning up again, taking out the viscoelastic. There you can see the outline of the rexus. That looks just about perfect. We're gonna fill the capsular bag here with 
our cohesive viscoelastic, and there's the outline of the rexus. Again, looks spot on. Here comes our lens, single piece acrylic lens. We're gonna put this in the eye. This patient is aiming for residual myopia for the outcome because he wants to have that great near vision. So here comes the lens being delivered nicely in the capsule bag. Chopper being used to position it. We'll rotate that until the haptics are in the desired position. And then we're gonna remove the viscoelastic. So rotating the lens here looks great. And now you can see again, there's the overlap of the capsorexis. And you'll see at the end of the case, we'll have this lined up just perfectly. So underneath the eye wall optic, let's remove that viscoelastic. And we're almost done with the surgery here. So removing viscoelastic, any residual lens parts are removed as well. A little bit more polishing here. We want this to look perfect. The central mark there as well, the top of the screen is another black dot marking the 180 degree meridian. And not shown in this video, but at the very end, we do a limbal relaxing incision with a diamond in order to help treat the pre-existing corneal astigmatism. Sealing up the incisions now, back and forth, nice and gently with our balance salt solution to seal the main incision. That looks great. And then look carefully, look at the overlap of the rexus over the optic. This patient is a very well-read and very well-educated patient. And he asked me at the end of the case, so how was the caps rexus? And I said, just wait till you see the video. I think you'll agree with me, that looks just beautiful. So we learned a nice two-step technique here for combined posterior subcapsular cataract and dense central nucleosclerotic change. So hydrodissect first, then delineate, and the case will be easy. Thanks for watching.